Today we're showcasing a 90s bedroom wall poster icon, the Ferrari Testarossa. What young lad in the 90s didn't have a poster of a Ferrari Testarossa on his bedroom wall? And today we're going to find out if this 90s icon lives up to all the hype. Today's video is presented in partnership with Hampson Auctions, one of the UK's leading classic, performance and supercar auction houses. Their next sale takes place on the 22nd of September at the magnificent Bowlesworth Castle in Cheshire. First of all, we're going to take you for a walk around of this beautiful Ferrari Testarossa. Then we're going to take it out on the road and see how it drives. This is a 1991 Ferrari Testarossa. 1991 was the last year of the Testarossas. Downstream from 1991 came the 512TR and the 512M. And the 512M, for example, has the Perspex headlights. You want the pop-up headlights, which exist with the Ferrari Testarossa, and they also exist with the 512TR. But the original Testarossa is the car that you want. This car has been kindly provided to us for review by Hampson Auctions. This car is up for auction on September the 22nd. So if you're interested in this car, make sure you go online and check out Hampson Auctions. I'll put a link to the advert to the auction in the description below. This particular car is resplendent in Rosso Corsa paintwork, which is in extremely good condition. Of course, we can't talk about the Ferrari Testarossa without talking about the side strakes. These side strakes are designed to cover or to act as a classic design for the air intakes that drive air into the engine. Moving to the rear of the car, you can see that these side strakes are carried forward to the rear design of the grille. And you can see here, this is what the Testarossa is really known for, the real side width or the back end width of the Ferrari Testarossa, which is always perceived to be very wide. But when you compare it against the modern Ferrari GT car, it's actually not that wide. And you have these classic rear hips, which give you a great view when you look through the rear door mirrors or the rear view mirror, you get this classic shape, Testarossa shape on the back end absolutely stunningly beautiful from the rear although as i say it could be perceived to be quite wide now moving to the engine compartment you have this engine very large almost clamshell type engine cover that oversees this stunningly beautiful 4.9 litre flat boxer 12 engine a lot of people perceive this to be a v engine a v12 but it isn't it's a boxer flat 12. you have the cylinders opposing each other like a boxer and this 4.9 litre boxer engine was carried forward from the 512 berlinetta boxer the 512 berlinetta boxer was the car that the testrosa replaced this 4.9 litre engine pushes out 385 brake horsepower, 361 pound foot of torque, will scream the car from 0 to 60 in 5.5 seconds and take you to a top speed of 180 miles per hour. When you consider this was a 1991 Ferrari GT car, that is quite impressive statistics for its age and its year. Moving to the interior of the car now, as I detailed earlier, the exterior paintwork is beautiful Rosso Corsa, which is what they call resale red. On the interior, we have this beautiful crema interior with burgundy offset carpets. The, the red burgundy carpets really offset this stunning, beautiful, full crema leather interior. As you can see, you have a black console, black leather console, and it's a right-hand drive. The fact that it's a right-hand drive is also quite rare. This car has 62,000 miles on the odometer and that auction is expected to reach as an estimate between 80 to 100,000 pounds. And this is a beautiful example of an original Testarossa.
So drive in the 90s bedroom wall poster icon. This particular model has quite a stiff gear change. It's probably because it hasn't been driven for a while. These cars commonly don't do well when they haven't been driven regularly. So I'm sure that'll ease up a bit with a bit of driving. We've got the headlights up now as well because it's, it's getting a little bit darker outside. So it looks pretty cool profile with the, with the headlight flip ups up. And as you can look in the rear view mirror and see those gorgeous rear haunches of the Testarossa, a real classic shape. Now when you get on moving, first of all, first impressions, it's quite a heavy car and the steering is very heavy, but it starts to really ease up and perform once you start moving forwards, once you start getting a move on. Clearly this car, being a GT car, they like to be driven at a certain pace. They don't like to be driven slowly because it's quite a hefty car. While we're coming into a village, I'll just talk a little bit about the interior ergonomics. It's classic 90s Ferrari. You've got the lights, some of the interior light controls on the upper console on the roof. Most of the controls for the interior for the side door mirrors and the side, well, for the side windows um, are electrically controlled, but electric controlled from buttons and switch gear on the center console, as is indeed the climate control. The climate controls, you have these canny, very quaint push buttons and you have various other buttons to push and direct the air to the screen. It's very quaint, very quirky, but that's what 90s Ferraris were like. The seats and the driving position is very interesting and again, very quirky. You're sat very much upright if you want a good driving position and you can get a fairly good driving position, but you drive like a bus driver because you have this big steering wheel, which is at a certain angle, very reminiscent of the sort of angle that a bus driver would have his, his steering wheel. And so you, feel, you very much feel like you're driving quite upright and it's very hard to get the seats adjusted perfectly because they're not modern seats. They're very old. It's a 1991 Ferrari Testarossa. You know, you're not going to get all those modern electrically controlled, fully angled seats. You just don't get that in these classic old Ferraris. So remember, this is a 4.9 litre flat Boxer 12 engine pushing out 385 brake horsepower, 361 pound foot of torque, and will take you from 0 to 60 in 5.5 seconds. So it's not earth shattering speeds and will take you up to 180 miles per hour. Again, not earth shattering, but it is a 1991 Ferrari and it is a GT car. So these cars crunched miles. They weren't used for short trips they weren't they weren't used for a short saturday trip um, around you know to get a quick blast like you would in a modern supercar nowadays these were used to really crunch miles and that's evident in this car because it's done 62,000 miles and i'm sure a lot of that was crunching miles probably across europe and you have that incredible looking manual gearbox of course which is which is really impressive it's a five speed with a dog leg reverse. So you have to be very careful. You don't try and slam it into reverse because on this gearbox, you've got no lock off. So you can, if you wanted to, try and force it into reverse, which will probably strip, strip the reverse gearbox, reverse gear in the gearbox, which of course you do not want to do. When you're driving and trying to place the front end, it's actually quite easy, especially when you've got the headlights up because it gives you nice markers on the haunches of the front wings where you can see to point and direct the car when you're going around corners. It's very easy, it's very easy to locate it. Uh, as I said, especially when you've got the headlights up because they act as a really big marker to the end points of the front wings. And of course, you've got that beautiful, stunning, classic look of the Testarossa with the flip up headlights up, which is a stunning look. Now, if you wanted to look at the gauge and read, read the gauges on this car, you have to look all over the place. It's not just on the dash. If you want to look at the water temperature and the oil temperature, I think it's your temperature or the oil pressure, then you look at the center dashboard. You have those in the center, would you believe it? No longer the tachometer in the center. And you have the tachometer on the left-hand side with the red line at around six and a half thousand RPM. And you have the speedometer on the right-hand side. And you have the odometer in the front of the center console, would you believe it? So it's at that point where you can see the, the mileage that the car's done, which of course is 62,000 miles here.
very well cushioned. The suspension is very compliant. Quite surprised at that. I previously drove a Ferrari Testarossa when JM on Cars reviewed uh, one of these, which was a couple of years back. If you look at the yellow Testarossa that JM is driving, actually I'm driving it for the drive-bys, for many of the drive-bys. So I have driven a Testarossa before and they very much have the same similar charm when you're driving them. You have to get them up to a certain pace to be able to get them manoeuvrable and get them compliant. Once you get them moving, they're a joy to drive, but it's getting them moving. You have to get that momentum going forwards. You can see why this car was used as a GT Cruncher. It loves to go at a fair old pace. This car's got the standard exhaust, so a lot of Testarossas were fitted with what's called a tubey custom exhaust. This has got the standard exhaust system on it, so it's not so sonorous, but it doesn't sound too bad. Again, it doesn't have particulate filters and it doesn't have catalytic converters, so it's not constrained in that manner. But it also doesn't have a tuned exhaust system on it. As I'm driving it around these country lanes, the suspension is, is quite comfortable. It's rather compliant, so which is actually quite a surprise for me. And it's quite maneuverable. Once you get it up at speed, you can actually put it into the corners quite well and it does grip. It tends to lean onto the tires because the tires are quite wide sidewalled. So they have a lot of cushioning in them. So you have to put it into the corners and lean on those tires and then it will grip. And it does pull the car around. The front does pull the car around quite well. Of course, you've got that 4.9 litre Boxer 12 engine in the back. So you've got that weight that gives you mechanical grip over the rear axle as well. But the front isn't light. So you don't get that feeling that the car's gonna slide away from you, you don't feel that like it's going to massively understeer. 